there we go. Finally got a breeze out of this thing. Don't know what the problem was. The air was just blowing out of one corner. Very bizarre. I think there's hair on the screen. Not a lot. I've had fans get much more hairy than this one, but I cleaned it off and now it's working. So that must have been it. <laughs> Anyways, uh, hey, what's up, Garden Friends? Jeff here. So, me, hope you're doing well. I'm great. You're watching the Sarah Boone trial. It's been fascinating. I do. I need to mute you. Sorry, Emily. Doing video things here. Been a very productive morning with the fan and. I guess that's about it. No, not really. Clean the fish tanks. Put a waterfall one in the garage pond. You want to? You want to see the garage pond? The waterfall? It's normal stuff. You gotta scoot your tortoise out of the way. Don't mind Colby. He was just having himself a little nap. Yeah, the garage is still a mess. I haven't cleaned things up to set the grow space up yet. The forecast hasn't made it seem like I need to do that right now. Look at the little waterfall. It's not little. It's three feet long. It's this is gonna be a thing that will end up driving me crazy. I'm gonna have to like get a stick or a, like a coat hanger so I can go in and swipe through there every now and then to clear it out. But uh, my thinking here is that this will help keep the humidity up in here during the off season, whenever I have all the tropicals moved in here. The heater's up above, that's gonna blow down here and you know, just help raise the humidity. And it just looks nice. It's very calm and peaceful. Solid minute into this video and haven't even made a point yet, just been rambling about all the things. Did I even say, hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here? I don't know if I did. If not, hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here. Ugh, I was supposed to cut these down. They had spider mites on them, and I sprayed them and haven't seen them since. I still feel like it'd be smart to get rid of them. So I'm just uh, picking up right from where I left off last week. Last week, the palm trees got taken away back to the greenhouse. So there's lots of vacancy <laughs> out here. There's a big hole in the ground. From where the Alexander palm was. I don't plan on filling that in. The hole can stay. Garden starting to wind down, you know, the shorter day lengths and drought. The drought. I know y'all are probably tired of hearing about it, but it's really affecting me. Everything is so thirsty. I've never had to water this much before in my life. I don't know how y'all in like the southwest or just even just areas where it doesn't rain often. I don't know how you do it. Had like maybe three good days of rain since July. We've had, you know, probably a total of seven days of rain since then, but it was just like drizzle. Didn't really penetrate. These bamboo planters, I'm having a heck of a time keeping these guys watered. I'm thinking I should probably put some drip on these because I have a drip line back here. May as well tap into that and put a head on each one of them. So that way they're getting extra water in addition to the water that I'm giving them. You don't look too hot either. It's, it's just, it's been so dry. Everything's bone dry. I'm putting on chapstick like five times a day and moisturizing. Not used to that in October. See, the drip, I think that would be a good idea. May need to do some rearranging out here, you know, because of, um, well, you know, all this. It's from having to move things around so that people could come in and pick up the palm trees. So I was wondering about maybe taking that croton y'all just saw and popping that over there. I had thought about doing that with the windmill palm that's over here but it's fresh into this container just a few months ago and getting things into that corner can be difficult you basically have to lay them down their side and scoot them in and i just don't know if that's rooted in well enough to do that with yet so i probably won't oh we have a bird friend we had a visitor but no it's gone i had gone a while without refilling the bird feeder because the squirrels have learned to jump from the maple over to the roof <laughs> and onto the bird feeder i don't really mind the squirrels eating out of the bird feeder but it's a problem with them jumping onto it and that metal banging against the windows are a little heavy and I was worried it might break the window. ADD. Is it annoying anybody? I'm sorry. I could take the windmill palm and scoot it over into this corner. That might be an option. I also have the two mule palms out here. There's one over here in between both of these bamboo planters and there's another one back here that has a heck of a lean to it. So it might be a good idea to get out of that spot anyways so it can straighten itself out and uh then i have a winter planter that's over here that you can't see it's underneath the Les Bedeza, but i would move that back over here now that i don't think you'd be able to see it yeah so in a nutshell drip do some rearranging i sat on the idea of maybe not doing anything in these planters this winter but now that a few days have passed it's bugging me having them empty so i think i'll move these spring grove arbs which are these two right here pull those and bring them down here and get them popped into these containers. I probably should have done all this before cleaning and 
power washing out here. This place was just covered in mud from moving the palm trees around, all the dirt and everything was being spilled. It would have been smart to rearrange all these big plants before power washing, but oh well, here we are. Okay, so, Croton. Should I move it? It's not heavy. It'd be an easy thing to stick over there. I don't think I'd even have to lay it on its side. The issue is, well, the dichondra, that's not going to work there if I have the croton there. I think I'd rather see the croton in that spot than the dichondra, though. But the question is, can I reach the dichondra? I think I had to get out a ladder to get that down. Oh, no. Bird's nest. Lost a bird's nest. Sorry, that's an old one. That's from the springtime. I'll just give that back to nature. Doesn't need to be over here. Yeah, I think I can, oh, the sun, directly in my eyes. I should be able to do this without looking, maybe. I can't see anything I'm doing. But now what do I do with this? <laughs> oh, geez, that is so long, I'm tripping over it. Can I just stick this up here for right now? I'll just do that. Yeah, that's fine, it's just for right now. This isn't permanent, I just need it to get it out of the way. Even the vinca, the vinca that are drought tolerant and the dichondra, I can't keep these things happy. As I said, it's not just the drought, it's this lack of humidity. This is stupid. Can I get this out with one hand? I don't know if it's that light. I don't think it is. I mean, I'm sure I could, but the question is, should I? Mm, probably not, but I'm gonna try. There we go. Yeah, that wasn't too bad. That's out, kind of. All right, it's not really out. That's, that's not quite accurate. Uh, you know, this is a bad idea. I shouldn't do this because I don't want to loosen this root ball either. And when I try and get it back there into that hole, it's going to do that. I do think it would look cool in that corner. Also, in like two weeks, probably, I'm guessing I'm going to have to move the croton inside. So if I'm going to be moving anything over there, it should be some of the more cold hardy plants, meaning either the mule or the windmill palm. I don't want to try and get that croton back there and then, and like I said, just two weeks have to pull it back out. That wouldn't make much sense. So far, the forecast is looking pretty good, shockingly good. I'm going into, I think, November 1st or 2nd from what I was looking at, and I think the coolest temperature I saw was like 48, which is unbelievable and just amazing. I'm sure that won't last. That's why I'm trying to plan this out properly. And I did like how this windmill palm looked over there the spring. But it was a smaller pot. How? Let's see. Let's just give it a little push. Is there any give? Well, this might be fairly well rooted in here. It just, I don't know. It seems really, really risky to be moving it, but I'm gonna have to do it eventually, right? And chances are in the next month or two, I'm gonna be moving this around anyways. Let's get this Chinese fan palm out of here. Do a bug check. It's been hanging out in the shade without much airflow. Yeah, that looks like got some critters in there. No surprise about that. That's just the way things go. So I'm going to lay this down for a spray. And then I'm going to try and get this wemo palm moved over there. And I don't know if I should be doing this by myself. It's pretty big and heavy. Yeah. That looks better. It was bugging me not having anything over there. This fits fairly well. I don't think the fronds are gonna hit anybody in the face. That's partially because I have them tucked up there. If they weren't tucked up, you'd be getting smacked in the face, but that's okay. I pulled one of the mule palms over, the one that was back over, you know, over here between the bamboo planters. The other one I remember is partially sunk in a hole, so I'm gonna wait for the weekend. Somebody else can help me with that, but I'll put it over here on the other side, and that'll help balance things back out. And then, and then, and then, don't remember what I was saying. Well, that's done. I thought about maybe moving a few more plants over there, but I really think getting some drip run to these bamboo planters should probably be my top priority because just look at them. You know how sad they are. They're so dry and thirsty. Oh, jeez, look at the table. That's all the plants that I was pulling up and randomly, ow, son of a, you got me again, this one. Spiky butthead. Don't think I'm going to be keeping that bromeliad around. I'm not all that fond of it anyways. Uh, yeah, all the things I was pulling out of containers <laughs> during the move just ended up over here. This was the catch-all spot. And uh, I'm not a fan of that. Everything is in disarray and I don't know where my things are. And that's not how I like to roll. That's the old Jeff. New Jeff keeps things organized. So organized. 
Don't even look at that. That's not even a thing. That's part of the catch-all. It's excusable because there was a lot of chaos. There, there, there's my clippers. Reach and grab those. This should be pretty quick and simple. It's only two containers. It's weird. I just stopped my recording instead of starting it. The only thing I hesitate about with this is I'm trying to keep this new drip line well organized. I don't know if well organized is the way to put it, but it's the only phrasing I can think of. And I just, I don't want tons of stuff popped in here that isn't planned out well. So just need to be mindful of making sure that these are put in straight across from where they need to be because uh, also don't want to use too much lime on these either. You lose water pressure if you use too much lime. How about this one? Oh, see, that's what I should have, I didn't even, dang it, I already screwed it up. I should have pulled this whole line back and put it where it needs to be pressed down, but I didn't, I didn't, oh well, well, next year. I think what I was saying, I set my phone down and just kept going. What I was saying was that I want to keep things nice and tidy because I don't want this to quickly become a line with lots of cups and goof plugs and new connectors and things in it from having to cut out portions of it. So I want to make sure that this was well thought out. I went ahead and I moved it back to the line and that's okay. There's enough hose there. I wouldn't say that's excessive. These are the heads I'm using. They're adjustable heads with a lock on the top so that they can't pop off. That's really nice. A lot of the times these drip heads that have the adjustable tops on them over time slowly those heads work their way off <laughs> it, I'm just doing that with a face full of bamboo um they pop off and it becomes a pain in the butt keeping things straight that should be good that's fairly well centered and i just need to turn them on and make sure they work okay moment of truth i just went and turned the sprinklers on i think i hear them kicking on thought I did. Nothing? Well, what's that about? Why isn't there anything coming out? Oh no, I hope it's not a pressure issue. Or is that just dialed down too far? That's as high as that goes. Uh-oh. Well, this one's doing something. It's not much. There's probably just hopefully some bubbles that need to work their way out. I've been talking every time I add heads onto this line about there maybe isn't enough pressure. And since these aren't doing their thing as they should be, I'm going to say there's not enough pressure. Dang it. All right, well, I met the maximum on that line. Good to know. But seeing as how it is fall, I bet that I could shut off some of the ones that are down here that are feeding the annuals. Those don't need to be running full blast and double check these. And here, just a trickle, huh? It's very bizarre. Where's my other heads? Like this one, I could reduce that down. That doesn't need to be going. Oh, it wasn't even on full blast. Well. I'm going to keep that more like right here. And just move it so it's closer to that hydrangea. Would appear the one that's over here hasn't even been getting this spot, so I'm not going to be turning that one down. What about up here? I could probably adjust this one down. It's a large spinner. Reduce that. About 50%. Need a little bit more. Still getting the other one. Mostly still getting the plants that are over here. Seems okay. Nah, I really can't turn those down. Those are important. Those are keeping everything in that spot watered. What about in here? I could bring this one down some. This doesn't need to be going full blast because I have a sprinkler head that works over here now. Originally, this was important because I didn't have a sprinkler head for the spot in the main irrigation system, but that's not an issue anymore. So maybe I'll just turn that off all the way. This isn't that big of a deal. Next year, I can split this line, cut it, clamp it off, and tap this line into the irrigation on this side of the yard, and that'll help with the pressure. But right now I'm just focused on this here. Okay, yeah, it's not ideal. There should be a lot more water coming out than that, but I'll take it. Any little bit of water is definitely gonna help with these guys. Okay, and now back to feeding my ADD with that corner and how I was saying I want to put more plants, but I stopped because I need to focus on the drip. Well, that moment has passed and I can move some other things around. I have an oleander here that I want to get back in this corner into this spot because I love the way an oleander looks next to the piling. Oh, it's so cute, so coastal. I love that. You come out of the house, how's that gonna look? Let me back up. Yeah, pretty good. I'm good with that, I like that. Both of these are plants that can take a good amount of cold. So I'm not going to have to rush to move them back into the house. Uh, I don't know, maybe 15 degrees. It's 
when I would move the trachycarpi. It could take some more cold than that, but it's in a container. So I have to be mindful of that. And of course, precipitation. There's going to be ice or snow. Need to think about that. The oleander, they can take a good amount of cold too, but I'll probably pull it in the mid-20s. Or again, if there's ice or snow in the forecast, then I would probably just pull that in. Not in there. That's where the dogs are. I don't want the oleander in the house with the dogs. Into the gross space is what I meant. And, uh, well, things aren't really tucked away and tidy, but there's still time for that. This is just the jumping off point. You're just getting things started over here. I think everything else actually looks fairly well hydrated, which means maybe I can take a break today <laughs> from watering, at least for a little while. <sighs> okay, maybe not. I'm gonna water. That'll take about two or three hours, which means I'm probably done for the day as far as filming goes, because that's what I need to devote my time to, but we'll pick up sometime tomorrow. Wanna get things looking clean again, make the place feel like a spot where you would wanna hang out. I guess I could maybe put the furniture back, but I don't know. I'd like to do some more things over here. I don't know. We'll pick up when we pick up. I don't know what's happening in this video. Oh, hey, pumpkin. He's so cute. It's the next day. Good morning. Slash just a couple seconds from wherever I left off. Emily, stop it. I'm doing the youtube -y things now. Don't have time for all the talking and all the stuff. I was just sitting here thinking about stuff I need to do outside and looking out the window and going, hey, but that's fun. The cannas are still blooming. It's almost November. Still got flowers and growth coming out of the cannas too. I'm really glad that I did the cutback on these a couple of months ago, if you don't remember. These were, um, they have filled back out, but they had filled in a lot over here. Sorry, I got distracted by the dogs. And you couldn't see out the window, so I pulled out all the cannas that were from here and over. And they did fill back out, but it let some light come over here to the back so the ones that were in the back could get growing again and start to flower. That's nice, got to prolong the season some. Anyways, there's things to be done outside. Yesterday, you know, I know I was kind of rushing through things and probably pretty chaotic. It was one of those days where I was like, I don't have a lot of time to work out here, but I just need to get a few things done. And I'm glad that I did. Should also grab my microphone. This should be on me right now. The audio is gonna be so even in this video because my microphone's here instead of where it's supposed to be. Oh, hey, Tubbs. Do you want to come out? You want to come outside? No, I don't have a flash on the camera. Those are just his eyes. He's an old man. Do you want to come outside? Do you? Oh, Toby, you're in a good mood today. That always makes me happy to see Toby up and about. I should put on shoes. Make sure the camera's pointing at something that's desirable to look at, not just the ground when I'm walking around and moving. It's cold. <laughs> it's not cold. It's like 54, but that feels chilly compared to what it's been recently i'm thinking get out here and move a few more things around i mostly just want to get things tidied up and i think that it might be time to ditch the heliconias all right where to start the heliconias like i said i think that they're done i went ahead and i gave them a heavy drink yesterday just to see if maybe some of this was dehydration but uh it, no it's, it's they're done it was too cold you know, a couple weeks ago, dipped into the upper 30s, takes a few days for the damage to show up, and now it's here, and I can see they don't look too hot, and that's okay. There's always options with them. I could, if I wanted to, I'm not going to do this, but I could divide them up and pull the rhizomes and start them over and everything, but I just, I don't, there's too much to do. I don't have time for that. Grab the gorilla cart here. I'm thinking since I'm over here, I should probably go ahead and just grab these arbs right can those even fit in here i have no idea i think that they should fit in there but won't know until we try make sure that's in there at a good angle so it's still hitting everything i love these arbs the <laughs> and i forgot their name i love them so much they couldn't even remember what they're called they're called like snow or winter something or others i can't remember oh, i forgot i repotted these so they're kind of heavy yeah and they rooted down into the bottom of the pots that's good healthy roots spring grove spring grove that's what they are i think i may have called them polar winter something before i don't remember i have these sugar and spice arbs that i keep in these two pots during the winter when these bigger ones are over there in those containers but uh well, I no longer have these. I have this. Poor old to singular. Lost one of them during the drought. It just didn't make it. It was too hot and too dry. 
and I don't, these would need to be the same. I think it'll look dumb to put one of them in there. So I'm gonna have to figure out something else to do with this one this year. The sugar and spice arms, really nice. They have great color to them. They're more of a lighter green color and they have really pretty kind of red, I guess is what you would call that, sort of a mahogany tone to the stems. And that's the name, sugar and spice arms. I know they say sun, but really these have been doing well for me in the part sun. Is there a height? six by two feet in five years. It's a small one, just a little one. That's a nice one you can work into the garden or use it for a small hedge. I like it a lot. I'm not too thrilled that the other one died, but that's okay. We'll figure out something to do with this one. And then I was gonna say hit up some nurseries at some point, but at some point it's pretty much over. The nurseries are pretty much cleared out at this point. Uh, maybe next week we'll have some time, can pop by and grab some clearance plants. What's been nice about these Spring Grove arbs is that even though they're fast growers, they haven't been too fussed about being containerized. I've been bumping them up into larger containers every year. This will probably be the last year that I'll be able to fit those into those two pots down there. But I've gotten like a good three, four years now. I think this will be their fourth winter in these containers. Maybe their third. I think it'll be their third. I got ahead of myself. That's not bad though. Sometimes with the perennials, you can't keep them around for too long. These are the bromeliads that were underplanted in the windmill palm pot. I had to pull them out because they were spiky and they were, they were just being problematic. They were stabbing me and I was having trouble getting leverage on that pot to get it moved. So I have to do something about that. One of these is certainly more dry than the other, which I mean, no surprise there. One of them had a drip head and if it was spraying out to everything else, the other one did not. This one did not. So it looks more dry. I'm thinking that that container would probably be the better place to put this. I'm not even gonna pot these up right now. I'm just gonna be setting them in there. I'm just gonna set them in their pots. That's, that's all I'm gonna do. Yeah, like that. See, I don't, can you see? The sun's in my eyes. I can't see anything come around to the sides. So they filled out very nicely. They have some dead stuff on the inside. You can kind of see. Some of that in there. Well, that's an oak leaf, but you can see some of the more bronzy orange foliage. Not a big deal. They do that. That'll fall off as they do some growing. They're, just, they're getting to be a good size considering they're in containers. If these were in the ground, obviously I would hope that they would be much bigger than this by now. I think the Spring Grove is just proven winner's version of the Green Giant. So yeah, there's a Green Giant over there, uh, perhaps, <laughs> what I was gonna say here is, perhaps maybe they don't bronze out as much as the regular green giants do. Stays dark green through winter. So I guess that's kind of the only difference here. What's the size? So the green giants should go, oh, these don't get as big either. So green giants should go 30 to 50 feet. These go 25 to 30 feet, 12 to 15 feet wide. So a good size, actually. I think that these are, really a better alternative to the green giant. Really, I can't speak on their growth rate because they're in containers. That's not comparable to being in the ground. The green giants, you know, they sit still for a few years as do most perennials and then they just grow, grow, grow. That's something I haven't talked about in the garden tours and I do not understand why. I guess just because I've been so focused on the tropicals, but the green giant, that thing has done some growing this year. This got put in the ground, I want to say, Three years ago, perhaps, maybe? It was either three or five. I, I do not think it was put in the ground in 2020. I'm gonna say that because I don't think that I would have been able to put that in the ground in 2020. Although I didn't actually. I'd have someone help me with that. So maybe it was, it, regardless, it's been between three and five years. <laughs> and it went in the ground as an eight foot tall plant and hasn't done a lot over the last few years. But this year, got a ton of new growth on it. Overall, the green giants are great but they do get kind of a bronzy tone to them in the winter time, which I'm not crazy about. And they go 30 to 50 feet high. That's massive, that's huge. I have this like pipe dream. I don't think it'll actually ever happen, but I've got this fantasy in my head of not having these pine trees here because they're incredibly messy and they make me sneeze and itch all the time. Having just hedges of not the green giants, but probably the junior giant. Those only go about 15 to 20 feet tall and having that across here. So they would end up being just a little bit taller than this one is now. You know, probably about another four or five feet taller than that one. 
They only go three to five feet wide is the problem, so you need a lot of them. So it would get really expensive. But I have thought about maybe just pulling the trigger because I know a nursery in here that has them and they're on sale because it's fall, but they're already a really expensive nursery, so them being on sale isn't gonna be that helpful. But I could get, you know, one, two, three, four, five. I would need so many of them is the thing. But the whole point there is I'm saying that it is fall, so this wouldn't be a terrible time to go ahead and start planting those things. And then as they grow and get larger, take out those three pines, the extremely messy, sappy pines. So many pine needles, I can't stand them. I just think that the thuyas, the green giants, spring groves, junior giants, there's a baby giant that stays even smaller. They just have more of a nice formal appearance to them. And I, do, I like the way these look in these containers. I'm glad I put them in here. It is bugging me not having anything in those two blue pots down there, but that's okay. I'll get over it. That's something I can do something about later, probably. Yeah, this is good. I'm glad I did this. And now I have the gorilla cart over here and ready to go. This isn't probably film worthy, but I'm just gonna grab these heliconias so I can get them out of here. They're taking up space. They don't look too hot. I don't want them out here because as long as they're out here, I'm going to feel like I need to be tending to them and taking care of them. And there's just not much point in doing that. And as I'm holding this, I can already tell you that one's squishy, very squishy, which isn't good. You don't want a squishy heliconia around. This one right here, there's a combination of dehydration and cold damage going on. But still, I just, I don't want to keep it around. There's no reason to. There are other things I could be doing with this container this fall, and I'm going to want it opened up. So may as well get it out of here. I really thought that these were fine because it didn't get that cold. But, you know, the heliconias, they'll be the first ones to let you know if you've had a light frost. You don't even have to have a light frost. They just throw a fit when it's not warm out. I want to say the coldest temperature we had out here was maybe 37. But hey, that's all it takes. And again, it's not necessarily that there was frost on them, but they stop feeding when it gets cool. When you start to have consistent temperatures below 50, they just shut down and they start to dehydrate and desiccate. Those are the same words and rot, essentially. So that's that's what happened here. It's OK. Got a lot of good use out of them. The Heliconia's did really well this year. I'm not bummed about it. And I already have some in the growth space, so not all is lost. I have some to play with this winter. And by play with, I mean get really upset with and constantly battle and fight with them over the critters and bugs that are going to be taking them over. Okay, so this one, when I take this one over to the yardway spin, I'll probably cut a couple rhizomes out of this one. This still has some really good looking stuff in there. But uh, the rest of the plane, I'd say that that's shot. That's done. Okay, that's better. It was bugging me, having those helis sitting around. They weren't looking good. Push a few pots around. I guess in order to really get things put back together, I need to get this other mule palm out of here. I know I said I was gonna wait, so I should have someone help me, but I don't really feel like waiting. I wanna get it done. I really just wanna get that moved over here. It's gonna be tricky, probably. Although, I turned that one sprinkler off yesterday the drip that goes to that one to give it some time to dry out. So maybe it won't be that bad. It's more just a matter of, well, I have to move all this in order to get it out of here. So that's going to take a minute. Huh? <laughs> I know. It's not that impressive of a change, especially when you're having the big old queen palms and everything over here. I'm just happy to have things set in place. The mule palms also kind of have, have more of a wonky growth habit to them. It's partially just their growing conditions, really. I think it's that they've been through it over the last few years. So, you know, they've, they've looked better, but nothing some pruning won't fix. I don't wanna do much else with them until they've been watered very, very heavily. So I have the hose running over here to give this one a nice drench. It was extremely dry, which was the plan. Wanted to dry it out so it would be easier to move, but I noticed that there's just, there's a lot of give up there in the crown and that is a dangerous, Thing. Don't want to see a lot of movement up there in the crown. And I've had issues with spear pole and crown rot with this one. So I want to make sure it gets nice and hydrated, both of them, before I do anything else with them. Which means that now I just need to come in here and I guess just pull some things out and start making it look nice again. The Lutea is pissed, but it looks like it's got some new growth coming out that looks pretty good. 
So maybe I'll just prune off the old stuff. Maybe I should just go ahead and move that one into the grow space. Actually, no, there's no reason to do that. Our temperatures are totally fine for the next 10 days. In fact, they're saying tomorrow, Friday, the day before this video comes out, there's a 50% chance of storms. That would be amazing. I hope that it happens because we really need it. And then next week, there's like three days at the end of the week where it might rain. That'll make things so, so, so nice. It's so much cleaner. Look at what a mess I've made too. There's just junk everywhere. This freshly cleaned patio. This is an awkward point in the year because I'm ready to set up like the stuff that'll be out for the second half of the year, the off season, as I like to call it. But the tropicals are still out here and I'm not moving the tropicals in until it is absolutely time, which will probably be sometime in the next two to four weeks, I would imagine. I, it's been a while since I've had these out past like, I don't know, generally by November 3rd, they're inside. A couple years ago, they were inside October 15th. Uh, but prior to that, for like a decade, I didn't usually move the tropicals inside until the week of Thanksgiving. So last week, second to last week of November. Just never know what's going to happen. Weather's unpredictable, right? But that's making it so I'm like, I don't really know what to, <laughs> what to do because I want to move things and do things with things. But there just isn't a lot of point in moving the tropicals around if they're still happy. But I certainly can't stop here because this looks awful, doesn't it? I was going to say horrible. Awful, I think is what I almost just said. I'm just going to take some time to think about everything going on over there and sort out this. I need to make a decision about this bromeliad that I pulled out from the queen palm. I think this one's name is Tango. I mean, it's fine. It's just a, there's nothing special about it, but I guess I could keep it. I just really need to be mindful about what I take into the grow space because there's only so much room. There's nothing wrong with it. I just, I don't know. I don't really care about it either. It didn't do anything for me. It doesn't have a lot of color on it, but I don't know, it's been sturdy. So I guess I'll just hold, what do I do with it until then? Let's stick it over here. Just like make it work inside the Eureka Palm like that. Yeah, I don't mind that. Naturalizes things. This is the Neo Regelia Fireball. And I just moved that because, well, I need to get out of the way when I was moving the Adenidia Palm out of here for the uh, greenhouse people for right now, or maybe for a while. I'll just keep that right there. I like how that looks. Roeo pulled this out from underneath one of the, uh, wait, no, I didn't. This is just, this has just been like this. This is how this has been the whole time. There was a Roeo that I pulled out from underneath the Gossia palms. I can't, what do I, I don't, I don't know what to do with you. Works for me. These are all plants that do need to stay more tucked over here in the shade for right now. I still have this guy, which I was debating repotting, but just seems like a bad idea. I cannot believe the Schefflera made it through the heat and the drought. Taiwanianas, they don't like it hot. They especially don't like it hot and dry, but I kept it tucked away over here in this corner. And it managed to pull through. I've tried them on multiple occasions, and I always lose them when things get really hot and dry. This is a mangave, which I need to go move over with the more tropical agaves. That's just the way my brain works. Not necessarily going to be the most beautiful spot to have it, but that'll work for right now. Jeez. The soil in this container, I think it drains way too quickly. That should be filling up by now. Oh, and now I've just jump started my memory. I was supposed to repot those. I completely forgot I was supposed to repot these. Dang it. Oh, it's too late now. I'm not going to do it when it's almost November. I guess I'll just, I don't know, give them a good top dressing and really, really, really have to stay on top of watering them. Those mule pumps take a ton of water. The epidendrum. Uh, I don't know. I don't, it doesn't look too hot. I think it just got too dry. I'm going to take it inside and give it a soak. Give this a shot. I know Emily's in the background. It's okay. Only going to be in here for a second. No see a reason to mute the TV. The parrot likes to listen to the TV. Oh, was that too much? Too fast? A little bit from the top. Do the rest in here from the sides and give this a very, very, very long time to soak. I'm talking like 
I don't know, maybe a good hour, something like that. I didn't know she was gonna whip out the goat while I was doing this. It's, you don't know who I'm talking about. Emily Baker, the legal commentator, does a good job at guiding people through the trials. You wanna come out? Come on, let's go, let's go, come on. How am I liking the view? Is the view good? I think that's nice. I even, I, I can't just leave it there, but I do like the way this hydrangea looks in this spot. I guess I could maybe, hi, I know, I'm so happy to see you too. I'm so happy to see you too, Turbo. Uh, let's say maybe I could put it right here where I, I stuck a Chinese fan palm in that corner. That's stupid. No, because if we get that rain next weekend, which hopefully we will, then these are gonna be going in the ground. That's the plan anyways. And this is the Roeo that I pulled out from underneath the Gassia palm. And is this, nope, no hole in that container. Just need to pop that up into something else. Uh, I still have my blue star fern in this pretty pot down here. Need to do something with that. That I think, I might just take that inside. I think they would be fine in the house. And by in the house right now, I just mean right there. It can sit right there for right now. Ah, better, I have a place to sit again. I, it's a cluster mess. Ooh, that was difficult not to say what I wanted to say there, but uh, it's, it's what it needs to be. I have a spot to sit. I'll handle the rest of the stuff later. Over here, I got something fun in the mail. It's a plant lamp. It's not a plant lamp. It's supposed to be like a self-watering container with a built-in light and everything. I thought it looked dumb. <laughs> to be honest. But um, I also kind of wanted to try it because in the pictures I saw one, I was like, well, that looks kind of cool with the viewing holes and everything. It might be worth trying. I would show you the front of the package, but my address label is covering the entire front and there's another address label covering the other side. I got this because, well, actually I got a few different kind of self-watering systems that are coming in the mail because uh, I, well, I was on Temu, Timu. Timu, however you pronounce it, a site I don't often use. There are a lot of ethical issues to consider with Timu. But uh, I was starting, you guys are gonna think this is ridiculous, but I was starting my <laughs> Christmas shopping. I like to get it done really early in the year, mostly the stocking stuffer. So I got word that, like, think everybody's gonna be home for Christmas this year. And that means 10 stockings. And that, like, I was just like, oh, oh God, 10, that's a lot. It costs a lot of money to fill stockings up. So I was like, well, let's go ahead and do the Timu thing. It's the only time I will use it is when I really need to save some money. So did that and got some neat stuff coming in the mail. I'm sure a lot of it's garbage. Uh, hopefully it's not, you don't wanna be wasteful. It's one of the issues with that sort of website is where it's like, oh, well, this is an okay product. It'll last a little while, but then it's trash or even just the scamminess that comes about with the descriptions and everything. I could go on about that. Oh, and you know, labor too. So I tried to stick with products that were identical, if not the exact same products I was also saying on Amazon. So just basically skipping over the people who are drop shipping them. That just, I don't know, seemed like the best way to do it. Try my best to avoid those things and support local when possible. But 10 stockings is a lot to fill up. And in the process of finding <laughs> the stocking stuffers, I came across this and a couple other planters that I thought would be interesting to try out. <laughs> Put y'all up on the tripod. What a beautiful view. Got the blower on the table the dog's skin infection shampoo, which she doesn't have an infection anymore, but it's still out here. Just keeping things looking nice as usual. I think it's when the yard gets like this, I just kind of have a tendency to say screw it all and just go with the flow with everything. Uh, it looks like these are fairly well packaged. By fairly well packaged, I mean just tossed into the box willy-nilly with absolutely nothing in here to hold it in place. It's literally just, it's just a box. No packaging. Maybe it's okay. I actually don't know. I haven't set this up yet. Okay, yes, this is cute, right? I guess it'd be easier to tell if I were to go ahead and take it apart so you can see what's going on here. There we go. So here's the inner basin. The light is stuck in there. There we go. So it's a self-watering pot, right? You, you've seen these before. Just a base that has a big indentation here. I assume that's yeah, because one of the sides of this one's flat. You put your plant in here, got some holes in there. This actually looks like a very heavy duty humidity dome, which it might be, except that it is molded. So probably not, because it's got the little spot so that that fits in there correctly. And I guess that's all there is to it. You got the lamp up here, the LED portion of it. 
Let me see. I'm going to bring y'all up higher. Hopefully without making anybody sick and without the tripod making too much noise. I have a power brick out here. I don't know if that's going to be enough to get this thing turned on to be able to see how well it works, but you can give it a shot. Oh, that's not a USB-C. I don't... Why are we still using these? If it's not USB-C, I usually am not interested. But this is something that's meant to stay plugged in, right? This isn't something where it's going to be charged and moved around unless it's like that one grow light I tried last winter where you had to charge it every three days. That was the dumbest design ever. I thought that was so stupid. Oh, and there is a regular USB on here. Although I think that's because supposedly you can use this thing as a charger for your other devices too. I don't know if that's something I would be interested in because, uh, well, you know, water seems like a bad combo. Got the power brick here set up. Again, don't know if that's going to be enough ampage, voltage, whatever it is to get this thing going. But we will see. Before planting it up, I think it makes the most sense to check it and make sure that the light on here even works. Although it is really sunny, so probably not even going to be able to see that. It has a remote control that is very big and heavy duty, bigger than any remote control that I think I've gotten with some of my like 100 watt lights that I have outside. That's intense. It has an eyeball or something on there. What is that? Are we doing light shows with the grow light? Doesn't really seem necessary. Turn it on. No. Okay. Well, I wasn't really expecting the power brick to work, but... Oh, wait. Oh, there we go. Got some power. Wonder how bright it goes. Is that it? That's as bright as it goes. So you can switch between red and blue. I don't know where this is supposed to be pointed to make the remote control work. Oh, it's just... It's doing its own thing now. Okay. Well, that's... <laughs> oh, okay. It's still changing. Should I let it run through a cycle? That might be what it's doing, it's just running through a cycle. I'm just going to give it a minute and let it figure out what it wants to do. Thought it might be a good idea to go ahead and take a look at the directions. Uh, that is an extra port you can use for charging your devices, so that's cool and good to know. The instructions are actually pretty easy to follow and understand that's not always the case with some of these products. And the features for the remote control are all laid out right here. And apparently there's a touch, like this is a touch light also. It says top light touch sensor switch so you just tap it on oh well that's why it was changing because i was tapping it with my finger i didn't know that that's that was an option on off oh so you don't have to have the remote control that's nifty look at all the different combinations you can just go red and go with just white white and oh, it looks like it's more of just a cool white I think it makes the most sense to try and get as much spectrum as you can and use both of those, but not necessarily what you would have to do. Okay, so the light works. Good to know. It says something down here about grow sponge number five on the parts list, which isn't listed here, but I don't have any, any grow sponges in here. It's just the power brick, which I appreciate. A lot of things don't come with power bricks. You have to buy them yourself or just hope that you have them laying around. And then um, a whole bunch of cable organizers. But no sponge. I don't think I need the sponge. That would be nifty, though. I assume if you're using this to start seed, then that would be a neat thing to use. So now, anything about what would I even put inside of this container? Because it looks like the light on here, it's not going to go up all that high. I think like, holy, I almost just got knocked in the head by a sparrow. I barely missed my head. That's about as high as that light's going to go. You can't even see it. So I guess that tells you something. It goes up fairly high. But still, I don't know if that's going to be big enough for what I was going to put in here. I have this Justicia here, and um, it could use a new container, but I don't see that working out. They don't get much bigger than this, the zebra plants, but um, well, I don't know. That inflorescence is done, so I could cut that off and then just let it sit in here and grow it up and let it get nice and bushy. Night and bushy. Nice and bushy. That's what I was trying to say and just see what happens, I suppose. Yeah, you know what? I'm just going to go with it. I'm going to give that a try. I'm going to get this potted up and see how it looks. Okay. Went ahead, got this potted up. I cut the inflorescence off of there. The crispy leaf on it. I'll leave it. The crispy leaf can stay. And then I guess we just put water in here. There are a few problems I foresee with this, though. One is that the main one, I should say, is that this isn't a traditional self-watering setup where you have a wicking cord 
or something like that. This is just, it's just a dome with holes in it. So is the idea that it just sits in water? Because that's not good unless there's bubbles or something to circulate that water that's just going to rot the plant out, right? I mean, that's what I would think about all this. Also, uh, the water is going to be pretty muddy and murky because you're filling it from the top. I suppose you don't have to fill it from the top though, right? I could be doing this differently, but I feel like this is how most people would do it. And I don't want to fill it up all the way. I mean, I do want to because I think it'll look cool <laughs> with those viewing windows, but then that's just a plant sitting in water. So there's nothing in there circulating it. There's no aeration, anything of the sorts. This is just a pot sitting in water and that's not great. That's not typically how you would want your self-watering containers to be, but it's what the directions say to do. So we'll, you know, give it a try and see what happens. Tap this on, off, nothing. Oh, did you decide you don't want to work anymore? Tap. There we go. Tap again. Tap again. Tap again. Tap again. Yeah, I don't know. I'll keep that set up in the house for, I, I don't even know how long. I guess either until the plant dies or it starts to grow. And then we'll port back on it in a different video. Uh, it's so disappointing though, right? Because this looks so neat. It's a cool looking pot. An interesting setup. I like the little windows. That's a big part of it. You can put some fun marbles or something in the bottom of there and make it look neat. Maybe some little glass fish, you know, make a fake looking fish tank. It'd be kind of cute. But uh, I don't know, outside of a spathophyllum or something that really wants to sit in water, this pot may not be all that good. Let me flip through the directions one more time and see if maybe I'm missing something. Is there supposed to be a wick or anything? No, the directions are all about just the electronics on it, the lights and everything else. Doesn't say much about anything in here specifically to the water level that I can see. Nope, nope, nothing. So that just is what it is. We'll report back later, see what happens with it. Personally, I think the best way to use a container like this would be not as a self-watering pot, but just as something that looks really neat and allow the water to drain into here and have a smaller of water that's not in contact with the bottom of that dome. And that'll promote humidity and everything. It'll be nice and moist. It'll draw the roots down. Just having the whole thing sitting in water. Well, that doesn't really make any sense. But it's done. It's cute. I'm interested to see what happens with it. Things are about as done as they can be out here for right now. Like I said, it's just an awkward point in the year. Really need to get the tropicals moved inside before I can do much else with refining the space. So, you know, prune up that alocasia over there, but otherwise, oh, and there's a chair missing. <laughs> Need to go get that chair moved back into the spot. I moved it because my nephew was here the other day and the angle of the sun was just brutal. So moved it to a different spot. Well, yeah, there's a lot of bad looking leaves on here. And I don't know. I guess that that must be cold damage. I don't remember it being that cold, but you know, you just saw the heliconias. So that would have been from a couple weeks ago. And sometimes it just takes cold damage a while to show up on the plants. So I assume that that's what happened there is it just took a while to be visible. That happens, not the end of the world, have some new foliage coming up, which is fine. I should really repot that, but it's not an ideal time to do that. I should also probably move this orchid because it's not getting shaded from the Robolini palm anymore. I do still have this cordal in here that's just chilling on the ground. I could take this and for right now, just drop that over here. So there's a trio of them. I don't like that being taller than the ones in the back, but it's okay. This is temporary. It's fine for right now. And uh, yeah, oh yeah, the chair. That's not quite right, but <laughs> it's fine. I'm missing a table. There's supposed to be another table over there. I don't know what happened to it. All the chaos with moving the palm trees around. I have no idea what happened to the, where, where is it? Didn't I pick it? Didn't I pick that up and move it over here? <laughs> I thought I did. Maybe. No. No, I did not. Oh, well, it's fine. Don't have to have the other table be sitting over there for the next few days anyways. Oh, hey, look at what's right in front of me. Little time, it was right here. 
drop that back there. There we go. That's better. Okay. Yeah. But reached a point of this is good enough. It'll do. Not at all the same appeal as the other palm trees being over here, but I don't mind it. It's better than nothing. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. Anyways, hey, thanks for hanging out <laughs> through the chaos of just basically putting things back where they go, getting to look at the palms some more. The mule palms don't get as much camera time as I think they really should be getting. So it's nice to be able to sit around and talk about those for a while. Glad I was able to get the windmill palm over there. Really impressed with how much that has rooted itself into its container. I didn't think that it would be that well rooted into its pot, considering it just got potted up a few months ago, but it's really in there. So that's really good. You know, they did the root stimulator twice, did a, a when upon planting, I think it was the first one. And then I think I waited like 30 to 45 days, something like that. Did another application and then I've just been using the petunia feed, which has a very similar breakdown to a palm fertilizer and the perfect palm slow release on it ever since then doing really deep waterings with it. So worked out. I'm glad. So I was a little bit on the fence about that. I had wanted to get that repotted earlier in the season, but you know, stuff was going on that time of year. Looks good. It'll look even better. I just, I want like another foot of trunk on that thing. That's going to look even better because right now it's, it's kind of in your face when you walk out the door. I have the fronds tucked up so they don't smack you, but it's not ideal. I'm just trying to find a different angle, but you can't really tell. It, it looks good. This is fine. <laughs> You're saying this is fine over and over again. You know that you'd like to perfect some things, but like I said, it just doesn't make sense to move things around right now. Not any more than I already have. I want to sit back and enjoy the tropicals while I can for the next, I don't know, two to four weeks, something like that. Just really happy that they're even still out here. Okay, like I said, I was gonna go. Hope everybody's doing well. I'm a great day, great life, and everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. Comment down below, say hi, what's going on in your gardens? I know a lot of y'all probably already have your tropicals moved in. This is very nice that I don't have to have mine moved inside just yet. Any of y'all grown the spring groves? Or I'm really curious about the junior giants. Are you growing the junior giants? I have mixed feelings about them, but I think I'd like to at least go to that nursery that says they have them and they're on sale and see what they're charging. If it's a reasonable price, maybe get several of those to put up here on the hill. In a few years when those grow and the pines are getting sickly, because this is the thing with these pines. I didn't explain that. These white pines, every like four or five years, lose one. And with the drought that we've been having, I just don't, I don't know. I feel like they won't be here much longer. So I want to have something else in place and ready to go for when the pines go. I think that one right there is probably gonna be the next one to go downhill. Did it again. So we were gonna go. Okay, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye bye.